Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Berdis and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here, unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. Some links, they may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without costing you anything extra, and other links, they'll be in the description together with some timestamps so you can jump to the point of your preference. We start this episode talking about Brumo Verno from Armanda, a creator from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene. This cozy game about witches, bonding and kilts is now each funding. It means that it's crowdfunding on each IO. In Brumo slash Verno, both players play as witches. One of them is a fan of winter and one is a fan of spring. And each one lives in a place that fits better such a season and keep their lifestyles coherent to it as well. Now you are trying to keep or to make a kilt together and want it to be ready for the spring equinox when both of your worlds come together. It is played in turns, each time a letter comes and a letter goes, or a, like a written letter, and it's supposed to be cozy and wholesome. An interesting play in my opinion and it's a very different twist of what we are, we are used to on different tabletop RPGs. Another project that comes from a creator from RPG Latam is Journey through Goblinland by Alice V. This gemless storytelling game is inspired by The Fall of Magic, which asks you to tell a classic high fantasy story from a different perspective. In Journey through Goblinland, you are not playing the regular heroes who go to Goblinland for journeys of friendship, adventure, finding the MacGuffin, trying to put a stop to the war that destroyed the region and all of that. No. You are playing the goblins from Goblinland, regularly overlooked and forgotten, but still loud and rude, wonderful, living and breathing goblins. I love the premise and the presentation of it, and you should definitely check this one out as well. And now, on general release, we have Get Me Productions of Spider-Man Turn Off the Dark by Row Flip Draw. The game was first in exclusively release and now is openly available. It is a hack of the unofficial Highlander 2, the quickening role-playing game, and easily invites you to some co-created chaos with the other players. It's a nice idea to have this co-created chaos, at least uh, for me. In Get Me Production of Spider-Man, you conceive, write, and perform your own condensed Spider-Man musical. You and the other creatives are presented in 2005 to the biggest project of your lives, a Spider-Man musical. In 2007, you are holding uh, the first reading of the script and previewing some of the perhaps songs and all of that that you have on it. And in 2011, it is finally the show premiere. Well, perhaps you will have to make the show happen by yourselves because something might happen, but uh, it's something that can come along. It is definitely not your usual game, and it's interesting. From Ludo Room this week, we have the release of Regicide, an adventure for old school games. In it, you decided that it was enough. The queen that sits in her palace seeing everything and her ministers that are always around the scheming must die. People outside of the walls of the palace starve living among plague and pestilence and all of that, while the queen and the ministers grow fat inside the walls. And now that the queen is dead, pull off her limbs and bury her. It's a interesting premise and very interesting coming from the room as well. I, I love the presentation and all that Chris Bissett brings to, to the table. And this adventure is only available in print and only if you order it before Monday, June 6th, at one minute past midnight on UK time. Each copy will be signed and numbered and no more copies will be printed. If it strikes your fancy, head to the Loot Room website right now and grab a copy before the time runs out. And by Alisa we have I Want Your Pact, a hack of I Want Your Bite. In it, you play as a soon-to-be warlock, a supernatural power vying for their service or a madding spirit just trying to make the competition more interesting. In it, you compete against each other, against the different players, to see who will get the better of it. It's like The Bachelor, but a warlock. And since we enter June, 
The Queer Game Bundle 2022 is live. You have a regular version, regular version, and a pay what you can version, which has a lower base price for the ones that can't really afford the full price of the bundle, which is actually the price of uh, one AAA game, for a reference. Both versions offer almost 600 titles from more than 400 creators, queer creators to be specific. Bear in mind that it has not only zinis and tabletop RPGs, but also softwares and digital games as well. And you have up until the end of the month to buy it, contribute it and bring help to queer creators and support to put the money where your mouth is. A great piece of news is also that Bianca Momatos, a creator from RPGC, the Southeast Asian tabletop RPG scene, and already interviewed here on in the news in a previous episode, won the Diana Jones Awards 2022 Emerging Designer Program. And to celebrate, Momatos just released 27, 27 Nobbling Facts, a supplement about the Goblin Rabbits of Ark. It's very interesting, it's very well put together, and you should check it out and also celebrate Mamata's achievement. On Jams, this week we have the Lingua Ludorum Game Jam that m just started and you have until the end of the month to submit to it. The idea is to submit a title of maximum 4 A5 sheets or 2 A4 ones following the team out of control. At the end of the jam, the plan is to compile the entries into a book to be sold and the proceeds from this book donated to a charity. You have more information on the jam page, so head there right now, take a look at it and see if you want to bring something to this jam as well. On articles and threads, there is this interesting read by Clayton Notestein, but this time is not about art or layout like the usual threads from Clayton Ossestin, but rather in mystery or investigation on tabletop RPG games. Even if you do not agree with Clayton's opinion or take in this particular idea uh, or in this particular subject, it still brings some good food for Todd and it is well written. It brings some ideas of what makes an investigation on our uh, mystery interesting and how or why some, so many games fall short to it. And in the end, it also makes a point in favor of Brandywood Bay. If you want to check it out, it's a great game as well, so you can check it out. But the whole thread about the mystery investigation is a great read, okay? For this week, I believe that's it. If you like the video, like the video, share, subscribe. You know how internet works. You can pay me a coffee on coffee. You can buy my games on itch.io. You can leave a comment in the to let me know what you are liking about the series what you are disliking about the series and i will see you all in my next video so see ya